Welcome, this is my lecture for section 1.1, Domain, Range, and End Behaviors of Functions. Okay, an interval is a part of a number line that doesn't have any breaks, right? So a finite interval has two endpoints, which may or may not be included, so that means what, they may be open or they may be closed. And an infinite interval is unbounded at one or maybe even both ends. Suppose an interval consists of all real numbers greater than or equal to 1. You can use the inequality statement. X is greater than or equal to 1 to represent the interval. You can also use set notation. Interval notation is shown in the table below, although we're not going to use set notation. Okay? So here we go. Here's the interval. All real numbers from A to B, including A and B. So this is a closed interval. Right? So that means uh, it's finite. So it has two endpoints, so it ends on both ends, right? So it goes to a certain value and stops. Okay, here's the way it's stated algebraically, is A is less than or equal to X, which is less than or equal to B. And by the way, there's an alternate way to do that. That's the most efficient way here. But that's also, you could also say X is greater than or equal to A, and at the same time, x is less than or equal to b. So when you see an inequality written in this form here, that that's actually an AND statement as a combined inequality. Okay, and then set notation. I'll just explain this for this problem, then we're going to skip always the set notation. You put braces there. So that says set, and this is x, and then the vertical line means such that. So x, such that, uh, x is greater than or equal to a, and x is less than or equal to b. And then interval notation. Interval notation just says, hey, all the numbers in between a and b. Now, here's how the interval notation works. Brackets are closed. So that's a closed boundary point. So what that means is that point is part of the set. So when do you have closed? You have closed when you have whenever you have equals, like you're just graphing a point. Okay, when you have less than or equal to, or when you have greater than or equal to. So being equal to the endpoint, that's a closed boundary point, and we use brackets for that. Parentheses, those denote an open boundary point. That means that's the boundary point, but we're not including it. So when do you see an open symbol? You see an open symbol when you have a not equals to, when you have a less than, or when you have a greater than. Notice none of these say equals, and so that means open. So in other words, here's kind of a trick question. Let me get a new slide up here. You know, <clears throat> you go on the number line, you want to say, hey, I want to do x is all the numbers greater than 5. Okay, that's fine itself. So all the numbers greater than 5 are these guys right here. Now here's the problem. What's the first number bigger than 5? Or you could say what's the first number to the right of 5 on the number line. And somebody might say 6. Well, that's because we think in whole numbers, integers. But that's not actually true because somebody that was a little bit like uh, clever about math would say, well, hey, how about 5.1? And then somebody else would say, well, I can get 10 times closer than that. How about 5.01 and then the next person will say well how about 5.0001 and that game can go on forever so here's what we do is we cannot even define the first number bigger than 5 on the number line so what we do is we put an open boundary on 5 and we draw a arrow to the right so that says hey all the numbers greater than 5 and the open boundary says hey start at 5 but don't include it so there's the open thing. So down here, all real numbers greater than A. So this is an infinite interval because it's unbounded on the right end. So we state that uh, algebraically as x is greater than A. Set notation, all the numbers x such that x is greater than A. And then in interval notation, we go from A to infinity. Now they put a plus sign there. I don't think they need to put the plus sign there. But notice this is open. That means start at A but don't include it. 
and then infinity. Now, infinities always open, or negative infinity is always open, as you see down here. And why is that? Well, because infinity is not a value. So if you don't have a defined value, you can't include it. Okay? So infinity is, hey, as soon as you think you get a value, keep going to the right. And then you think you get a value there, keep going to the right. So that's that same game we are talking about a minute ago, only going out forever on the number line. So infinity and negative infinity, they're always listed as being open because you can't include them because they're not a value. Right? And then all real numbers less than or equal to A. So that's another infinite interval because it's unbounded on the left. And then set no so x is less than or equal to a is the algebraic representation for that. <clears throat> the set notation, all the numbers x such that x is less than or equal to a. And then for notation here, for interval notation, we always do intervals from least to greatest. So we go from negative infinity, that means forever to the left, and then we go up to a and including a. So because of the equals part right here, this boundary includes the a, so a is closed. And here's the graphical representation of that. So all the numbers between A and B, including A and B. So there we go. Here's our line right here. And notice it's all colored in. That includes A and B. And all the numbers in between. X is greater than A. So start at A. Notice this is open, so don't include A. And then all the numbers to the right. And then X is less than or equal to A. So that means start at A, include it and all the numbers to the left of A. So, closed boundary, closed boundary, open boundary, closed boundary. Okay, complete the table by writing the finite interval shown on each number line as an inequality and using interval notation. So, here we go. Notice here it's all the numbers from negative 3 to 2. So we know x is greater than, going that way, and equal to, because the boundary is closed, negative 3, and at the same time x is less than or equal to positive 2. Interval notation, all the numbers from negative 3 to positive 2, and both endpoints are closed. In other words, the endpoints are included in the solution set for that group of numbers. Right here, same thing, we're going to have a, a finite inequality, so we're going to go from negative 3 to positive 2, but in this case, the negative 3 is open. So it's going to be, hey, x is greater than, but not equal to, negative 3, and x is less than or equal to positive 2, because the 2 is closed. And then for interval notation, so we're going to be open. It's going to be all the numbers in between negative 3 and 2, but it's going to be open on the negative 3 and closed on the 2. There you go. It's supposed to be pretty straightforward. Right here, so all the numbers less than or equal to 2, so x is less than or equal to 2. Interval notation, that's going to be from negative infinity, because we always go from left to right, right? So negative infinity up to and including 2 for the interval notation. And here are all the numbers greater than 2. So x is greater than 2 as my uh, algebraic statement. And then interval notation will be from 2, which is open. And then to the right, going towards infinity, which is always open. Consider the interval shown on the number line. Uh, that's the whole number line. Represent the interval using interval notation. Well, how far are we going to the left? Forever. So that's negative infinity. And of course, negative infinity is always open. And then we're going to the right forever. So we're going out to positive infinity. Infinity is always open. What are the numbers in this interval? Well, it's all real numbers. The math symbol of that is a capital R with a double backbone there, or a double spine, whatever you want to call that. So any real number. What do the interval 0, 05, 0, 05, and 0, 05 have in common? Well, they all include the numbers in between 0 and 5.
So they all include all those numbers that are graphed there now. This guy here, 05, zero 05, uh, zero where both of them are closed. Okay, that just means they're both closed. So both endpoints are included. So we're going to color in both endpoints. The second one, 05 here, the zero is closed. So the zero is included, but the five is open. We're not including that. And on this one right here, zero and five are both, both open. So what makes them different? We'll make, what makes them different is whether they include the endpoints or not. So the first one includes both endpoints, the second one includes only the left endpoint, and the third one inclu includes neither endpoint. And of course, there's a fourth possibility. The fourth possibility would be 0 to 5, where just 5 is closed. Oops, that'd be open, and then the 5 would be closed. There you go. Recall that the domain of a function is the set of input values x and the range is the set of output values y, or you could say the function of x. The end behavior describes what happens to the, to the y values as the x values either go out to the right forever, that means increase without bound, they're going to the right forever, approaching positive infinity, another way of saying that, or decrease without bound, that means they're approaching negative infinity, going to the left forever. So you have a graph of a line, looks like this. From the graph, you can make the following observations. As x increases without bound, f of x also increases without bound. Well, here's the thing. As this graph goes to the right forever, the range, as the domain goes to the right forever, the range values go up forever. So that's what this says here. As x approaches positive infinity, so the right arrow means approaches or goes to, <clears throat> f of x, y, approaches positive infinity. And then if we go the other way, to the left, so as x goes towards negative infinity, you notice y is going down forever. So as x approaches negative infinity, the function, or y, or f of x, all those mean the same, approaches negative infinity. So a lot of times, uh, in precal, we call this the end behaviors. The left end behavior is negative infinity. The right end behavior is positive infinity. Now, here's what's interesting about a line. The domain and range of any linear function with, a, with slope are always all real numbers. So here's the deal. Here's a line with positive slope. Here's a line with negative slope. Both of these have no slope. The first one is a vertical line. The slope is technically undefined. And this is a horizontal line. The slope is 0. So notice the line with positive slope. As we're going up to the right, hey, as we go to the right, as x goes to infinity, right, or y is going to positive infinity as well. And then the opposite is true. As x goes, as we go down the line this way, as x goes towards negative infinity, that y goes towards negative infinity. So we say the left end behavior is negative infinity, the right end behavior is positive infinity. That's a line with positive slope. A line with slope negative, so m, the slope of the line is negative, is just the opposite. The left end behavior is to positive infinity, and the right end behavior is down towards negative infinity. Now, for these guys, it's kind of special. Because here, the left end behavior is, there's no left and right. It's a vertical line. So it really doesn't make sense to say left end behavior, right end behavior. But here's what's going on. The equation for this line is x equals some number, some constant, whatever this is. So this point here is uh, 1 comma negative 2. If you go up one unit, then that point is 1 comma negative 1, 1 comma 0. Um, 1 comma 1, 1 comma 2, 1 comma 3, etc. And what he knows is true of all these points. Well, just what the equation says. x is always equal to 1. And so notice what about the domain. Well, the domain is all the values x can be. And the equation itself says x is always 1. So the domain is, that's supposed to be a brace. My hand on the mouse did not work out very well. Is 1. Then what's the range? Well, look at the line. It's going down forever, so it's going down towards negative infinity. It's going up forever, so it's going up towards, or you could say it's approaching, positive infinity. So the range is all real numbers. Special line. Because most lines, any line with slope, where m is a number that's not 0, 
right? Any other real number except zero. Hey, domain and range are both all real numbers because these lines both go to left and right forever. They go up and down forever. That's what it means to have uh, some kind of slope, whether the slope's positive or negative. And here with the horizontal line, notice what's going on. The equation for this line is y is always equal to some number, whatever that number is. So the left end behavior is that number. The right end behavior is that number. So the domain, that's going to be all real numbers because the number goes to the left forever. So it's going to go towards negative infinity. And then on the right end, it's going to approach positive infinity for x, for the domain. But for the range, notice that, hey, y is always k. So as, as x gets more and more negative, y stays k. And as x gets more and more positive, y is still k. That's supposed to be a brace, but again, my coordination with the mouse sucks. So there we go. The range is a single number. So for vertical line, the domain will be a single value. The range is all real numbers. For horizontal line, it's just the opposite. The domain is all real numbers. The range is a single value. Okay, I don't have the thing on my screen. I was wondering if the recorder is working here. Well, we'll go on like it is. Uh, here we go. Write the domain and range of the function as inequality using interval notation. Describe the end behaviors of the function. So here's the function y equals x squared. Well, what do we notice about a parabola or a quadratic function? This guy curls up, curves up, and it never stops expanding to the left. And as it curves up here, it never gets vertical, so it never stops expanding to the right. So the domain is all real numbers. And interval notation, we'd say that's going to be negative infinity to positive infinity. The range is, hey, the lowest value here is the origin, 0, 0. And then it goes up on the left, up on the right. So the left end behavior is towards positive infinity. The right end behavior is towards positive infinity. And the range is going to be uh, y is greater than or equal to 0, or an interval notation from 0, including 0, or there right at the vertex. That's the lowest point of the graph called the vertex, where it's infinity. This function is the exponential function to the x power. Uh, so what's happening here is this is an asymptote. So an asymptote here is a value that the function approaches but never reaches. So the function here is x goes towards negative infinity. This guy gets closer and closer to zero but never ever gets there. So here's what's happening for the domain. So the domain is, hey, we're going out to the left forever and this guy here as it curls up just like the um, quadratic function, it never gets vertical so it never s stops expanding to the right. So we're going towards negative infinity on the left and positive infinity on the right, so all real numbers. And an interval notation, just what I said, from negative infinity to positive infinity. And then the range is going to be, we're going to go from 0, but not including 0, because we never get there, and then we're going up forever towards positive infinity. So the left end behavior is approaches 0, the right end behavior is approaches infinity. So the range is going to be y is greater than 0, not equal to, right, just greater than. And that means in interval notation, that's going to be 0 to infinity, where the 0 is open. Okay, here's a graph of a quadratic negative x squared. Okay, so just like the first quadratic, this guy is slowly expanding to the left forever. It's expanding to the right forever, not ever stops doing that. So the domain is all real numbers. So again, an interval notation that's negative infinity to infinity. The range, however, though, is going down towards infinity. Both end behaviors, the left end and the right end, right end are both going towards negative infinity. And they have a maximum here of the origin, which is 0, 0. So the range is, y is, 
less than or equal to zero. So for integral notation, that would be negative infinity to zero. And the zero is included, so inclusive, which means it's closed. Okay, most common mistake here is people want to put zero to negative infinity. But we always do intervals from the least value to the greatest value. So when we write the domain in interval notation, we're always going to go from the left to the right. And when we write range in interval notation, we're going to go from the bottom of the graph to the top. There we go. Draw the graph, identify the range, use the same notation as the given domain. So here we go, the domain is negative 4 to 4. So the graph is going to be a y-intercept to positive 2, a slope of 3, 4. So we're going to go up 3, 4 to the right, something like that. That's going to give me our line. Now this is the y-intercept, so this is the value for y when x is 0. And then as, notice the domain here, I put arrows, but I should put endpoints here. The domain is restricted from negative 4 to positive 4 for x. So what we have to do is we have to figure out the range values that go with that. So we put negative 4 in for x. Negative 4 divided by 4 is negative 1 times 3 is negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. And then we put positive 4 in. The 4s are going to cancel. Give us positive 3. 3 plus 2 is 5. So while the domain is negative 4 to 4, the range is going to be the lowest value is negative 1, the highest value is 5. And that's how that works. And this works the same, only instead of being um, a, a finite interval, this is an infinite interval, and they use set notation, because that's just lovely that we do that. So the y-intercept is negative 2. So this is 0, comma, negative 2. And it's going to go from x is greater than or equal to negative 3. So this is where x is 0, so we're going to go down to... Oh, and the slope is negative 1, so I'm drawing this the wrong way. Silly me. So the slope is negative 1. So x goes... x is greater than negative 3, so this can go forever to the right. And to the left, it's just going to go up until negative 3. So there's my domain from negative 3 to infinity. And so this is going towards negative infinity for y, of course, as x goes towards positive infinity. And here at negative 3, the opposite of negative 3 is positive 3. Added to negative 2 would actually be 1. So the range here is going to be all the numbers y such that y is less than or equal to 1. Actually, this is open. Silly teacher. Yeah, this is open at negative 3, so it does include negative 3. So the range value does not include 1. So y is less than 1. Okay, there's some good examples there. Other than that, if you have questions on section 1.1 here, domain range and end behaviors, you need to find time to come talk to me. Other than that, have a great day.